A UFO event happens when you least expect it. Most people out there will tell you that. I mean, who expects anything like that to happen? Who expects to see something like that? You know, when I had my experience in 1994, August of 1994 in Pennsylvania, uh, it came out of the clear blue sky. It was the last thing in the world I expected. Last thing in the world. Fishing, nighttime fishing, you know, it was all pure chance that we, that me and my one buddy were there. Uh, I had gotten call. He called me up. My friend Scott called me up earlier in the day and said uh, he had permission to go fishing at this uh, private community. It was a lake called Beach Mountain Lakes near Hazelton, Pennsylvania. And uh, he said uh, there's a pond near the lake that he wants to fish at. He wants to try it out. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll go, All right? He said his mom, now his mom apparently knew someone that lived at this uh, lake, had a house there, and uh, he had asked her to ask this, her friend, if it would be okay if he went fishing there, so he had to get permission. Um, <clears throat> there was actually a guard at the, uh, when you go in, you had he had to go talk to some guard at a, at a gate, you know, before he can go in. But anyway, before we got there, he called me up earlier in the, in the day, and he's he's there. Oh uh, yeah, you want to go fishing at this place? You know, I'm dying to try this out. There's a pond off the lake there that uh, I want to I want to try fishing. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Sounds like fun. And actually, you know, it was the first day I ever went to a Walmart. Uh, there was a Walmart in Hazelton. There wasn't one in it's, Hazelton. Was is about an hour, or excuse me, about a half hour or so away from where I was living at the time. And I just never went to the Walmart in Hazelton. I'm not sure how long it was there. I just never went to one. And that was the first time I ever went to one. He picked me up. We drove to Hazleton. We stopped at the Walmart to get bait and you know snacks and drinks and stuff. And uh, and then we left the left this place and went left Walmart and went to this uh, place, Beach Mountain Lakes. And he had to talk to the guard and, and expect, you know I don't know what he said to him, but you know I guess he he had to let him know, let him know that yeah my mom was friends with this person and they said it was okay and you know I don't know if there was a you know. I don't know what he had to do to get in, but we got in. So we went back, and I remember we there was a, I remember seeing the lake. You had to drive through this dirt road. It was a dirt road or something. You had to drive on, and I remember seeing the the main lake. And then we we drove away from that off off to the, the off to the right of that uh, to the right of that lake was this pond, and uh, and like uh, so we went to this pond and we started fishing. It was you know it was just getting dark out. It was like dusk. I was probably got there around six o'clock at night, somewhere around that vicinity, and we were fishing. And um, um, you know, it got dark after a couple, a couple hours. I mean, we were fishing in the pitch dark for a long time, and we weren't catching anything. There was not one bite. And uh, you know, it was just one of those. I probably wouldn't even remember this if it wasn't for what happened next. But it was around ten o'clock at night. Um, and I turned around to get something out of the tackle box. And behind where the pond was, like behind the pond, there was like all this, like it was, it was like, a, like a field of, of all this high grass. And then on the perimeter was, you know, trees, it was forest, you know, woods. And I could see these three gigantic bright lights, you know, in a line, you know, these lights, they were like something like headlights, except a lot bigger, like very, very big. Big, you know, and they were like uh, 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 lined up uh, horizontally. You know, it was probably I would say uh, this thing, whatever it was, it was as big as a house. And it was there; these lights were hovering behind the trees. Uh, there was a little clearing at the one section of the trees, and they were coming toward the clearing. And I saw the lights, and I turned to my friend Scott. And I said, "Scott, what the hell is that?" And he turned around and looked at it. He said, I don't know. That was the way he said it. So this thing comes out from behind the trees now. Now it's in the open. And it starts coming right toward us. Right toward us. And I was scared out of my mind. I mean, this thing was only two and a half stories off the ground. And uh, 
it got right to our position and stopped in midair for a few seconds. It just stopped. There was no sound whatsoever. You could hear crickets. You could hear no sound coming from this thing at all. It was like this big ranch house just floating up there right in front of us, right in front of us. And these giant bright lights like on high beam mode um, on the front of it, three of them. Now, I couldn't make out the shape of it because the lights were in front of me. Now, Scott said that he, he thinks it was a triangle. I don't know. But he he had a flashlight, and he started shining a flashlight. He was he was closer to it than I was, actually. He was almost underneath it, and he was shining a flashlight up at it. And I was like, Scott, let's get the hell out of here. And you know, I was afraid. I thought the thing was about to land. I mean, you know, I, I didn't know what was going to happen next. And uh, so we start, you know, we just start throwing all the stuff in the back of his pickup truck. We got in the pickup truck. And meanwhile, this thing just, you know, had, which had stopped. Now it was moving in a different direction. It was moving in the opposite direction from which it came, basically. Back to, back toward the trees, but in, like in a, in a different direction. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was stunning to see this thing. So... And then, you know, we got in the truck and we were driving through the dirt road and we had to stop for a minute because there was like 20 deer, you know, that were running away from the direction where this thing was flying. We had to wait for them to, to run across the dirt road. Then we got out of there and, uh, you know, we uh, we went to a, a donut shop and we drove into Hazleton and we went to some donut shop. I remember both of us were in shock. There was no talking, you know. And then we, until we got in the donut shop and I said, this guy says, that was a UFO. And the first thing he says, I'm not saying anything. I'm not telling anybody. He was afraid about, you know, with the stigma. But what an amazing thing to see. What an amazing night that was. I mean, this terrible night of fishing. I mean, I remember Scott. You know, Scott's a big fisherman. And uh, he tried. He was trying everything to catch things. He was, you know, doing all different kinds of bait. And nothing was working. I remember we just had it was nothing. I I didn't care though. I was just having a fun time sitting there. We were just both you know talking all night, just bullshitting, you know, drinking iced tea, and then all of a sudden this thing just out of the clear blue sky, you know, nothing, you know, everything's, you know, I, I wonder if if I didn't turn around, you know, that thing would have been on top of us before, you know, I, then I would have turned around because uh, you didn't hear it. There was no sound coming from this thing. I mean, it, it was huge. It was huge. You know, I wish we would have had a camera that night. You know, or a, even better, a camcorder to film this thing. It would have been, you know, probably among the best uh, images ever of one of these things because it was so close to us. It was right there. I mean, it was right up, right in front of me. I mean, only like I said, it was like you know, it was like it stopped like right in front of right in front of us, basically. And you know, I'm looking at it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was so amazing. The whole uh, the whole experience. Um, but wow, see when things like that happen, you just don't expect it. Um, I wish again, you know, in 1994, none of us had cell phones, of course. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it would have been it would have been nice to have at least take a picture of this thing. It would have been amazing to have a, have some sort of a image that you could look at forever. But I mean, I, I it's burned in my memory. I I know. So, so not, the only problem is, is like you know, you tell people about it, and you know, oh, it could have maybe it was, you know, no, maybe it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't anything that could have been human made. Couldn't have. Couldn't have been. There's just nothing that that could have been that big that could maneuver like that. You know, this thing was really close to trees. The way it was, you should have seen the way this thing moved. Uh, and no sound at all. I mean, that was the stunning thing about it. Um, man unbelievable but again you know when these things happen it's always unexpected so these days luckily you know many of us uh, you know have cell phones handy um make sure your cell phone has enough space on it you know there's always some open room on there so you can film something or take a picture because you never know when, when one of these incidents is going to happen a lot of people do upload them uh i've mentioned before there's some channels out there that i like to, to go to like uh, secure team 10 um third phase of moon they you know they have uh you know images pictures videos of just from regular people from all over the world uh taking Im taking pictures of these objects but uh yeah yeah i know that they're there i know that they exist because i saw it with my own eyeballs um my friend scott knows something 
what's going on too. I mean, you know, every now and then over the years when I talk to him, we we, we talk about it. Like I'll bring it up because it's still such a fun thing to talk about. It was just such a stunning, stunning night. You know, this dull night of fishing that, you know, really we couldn't catch anything. And then all of a sudden, you know, apparently something that came from outer space is hovering right in front of our faces. It was unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, you know, be prepared. Be prepared because these things happen, you know, when you least expect it. When you least expect it, you know. Um, I remember, you know, in the 19, uh, 1997, it was I guess it was during the, around the 50th anniversary of the Roswell incident, um, I was working on an article for a newspaper and I about UFOs, about the uh, UFOs in the area that I was living in at, at the time. And um, there was this old guy that I, I ran into um, in Gerardville, Pennsylvania, and he told me a story where he saw, um, you know, back in the 60s, um, he saw some object flying out of the ice, like out of a, uh, basically there was a stripping hole called the uh, the B hole uh, in Ger- near Gerard. There was an A hole, B hole, C hole, uh, with these old stripping, uh, mining stripping pits they're called. They used to, you know, they, they dug them up. They made these big holes to dig for coal back in the day, but then now they're just filled with water. And he was uh, walking back there. It was in the middle of winter time, and he had his dog. And uh, he saw he, his dog didn't want to move any further. His dog got a, became scared. And then he saw this object just coming out from beneath the ice in the bee hole. And this bee hole stripping pit came out from beneath the ice and you know came up in the air in front of him, and then it shot straight up. Um, you know, the problem is, like he said at, back then, you know, you can't prove it. You know, you can only people could believe it or they don't have to believe it one or the other um and that's the that's the situation that we're in and you know a lot of this the reason that is is the stigma there's also a stigma people are afraid that we're afraid to talk about this over the years it's becoming better these days um you know with all the documentaries you see on tv and on the internet streaming services there's a lot of stuff on discovery plus right now uh, on amazon prime there's all kinds of stuff netflix has things on there um, so it becomes, it's easier these days, you know, uh, but there are still a lot of debunkers and doubters and people who don't want to, they, they just don't believe it and they don't want to believe it. That scares them. So they, they, these kind of people, they flock to, uh, they want to hear some debunker tell them it's all not true because they need that. They need that assurance that they want to be assured that there's, there's no aliens out there because you know, they don't, they don't want to deal with that. They, you know makes them afraid but yeah uh the, now unfortunately you know our government there is a faction in the government you know who are these people who are the people sitting on this you know it's time i mean they've been sitting on this you know since you know po- there, there are policies that have been uh uh established that were established under you know people like harry truman in the late 40s and and dwight eisenhower in the early 50s uh that policies to uh, keep this thing a big secret, uh, debunk it as best you could. Let's keep a secret. While meanwhile, we'll study it secretly ourselves. You know, you know, stigmatize the whole thing. They actually did. You know, the government back in the fifties, they stigmatized it. You know, said people were drunks or or, 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 or insane or you know, mental problems that saw these things, or that it was just some you know, natural atmospheric phenomena. Now, in some cases, it is natural atmospheric phenomena. Sometimes there are things that are misidentified and are explained later on. But there's no explaining the kind of thing that I saw that night, you know. No, they're just impossible. It it wasn't a drone, you know. Drones don't come in that size. Uh, And uh, this thing didn't make any noise, you know, moved around. (laughs) It was unbelievable. And it was 1994, too, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so be prepared because it could happen someday. You could be, you know, at some lake somewhere by your, you know, with family having fun and all of a sudden you'll see something will just happen. You know, have your camera ready, your cell phone ready, you know, take a video, take a picture, whatever you can do. Just be prepared because it comes out of nowhere. 